Hi everybody, this is Luke. You might have spotted a video about the open source firmware with the 860C display on a TSDZ2. That video was made for French speakers and I promised I would have done another one in English. So even if I'm a bit late on it, let's get started. In this video I'm gonna talk about the OSF in its two possible configurations, keeping the stock VLCD5 display or using the advanced 860C modified one. We'll see similarities and differences between the two, so you can make up your own mind about which one is better for you. One thing I should say again is that the Tongsheng mid-drive kit comes in two variants, 36 v and 48 v the maximum rated wattage on this motor is just a software limit. This means that installing the OSF you'll have a 500 watt rated motor if you got the 36 volt variant, which is the one I got, or a 750 watt rated motor if you have the 48 volt one. You can then limit your own configuration in the OSF settings if you need to. This summer I started searching for the easiest way to install the OSF on the Tongsheng TSDZ2. Since many of you ask this question, let me say that the OSF can also be installed on its successor, the TSDZ2B, unless he has a V2 controller. If you need more insights, you can join this discussion. The easiest way to install the OSF is by keeping the stock display. I already made two videos where I explain in details all the necessary steps to do it. But in short, this way is very effective. You have many advantages over the other method. You don't have to buy and modify another display. You can keep all your Tongsheng original pieces like brake levers, cables and display. But most importantly, you're not missing up on any performance. Cause the motor will respond in the exact same way. This is a great deal for all TSDZ2 owners. The only downside is that you miss a lot of on-screen information. Because, as we know, the VLCD5 display is a very basic one. By the way, from my point of view, the missing extra information doesn't worth the extra time and effort to build a custom display, where you have to find or build a bootloader box, open and flash your brand new display, modify the cabling of both the motor and the accessories, like brake levers and throttle. The easiest way to get a fully compatible A60C display for your OSF mid-drive e-bike is to buy one already modified for you. That's where our sponsor comes to help us. On cyclo.fr you can order the modified A60C display. You have nothing more to do than install the OSF on your Tongsheng kit, then connect the new display which will be shipped to you anywhere in the EU. You can also directly buy the complete Tongsheng kit already flashed with the OSF. All the link to the products in the description below. Another important thing to remember when ordering the display will be to share with the seller the type of connection that you have on your motor. It might be ending with either a 6-pin male connection, the one without the throttle, or an 8-pin female connection, which includes the throttle. This is important because if the seller sends you an incompatible connector, either you have to send it back for replacement, either you have to do what I did, which was to redo all the cabling. Now about the OSF motor firmware. If you need the step-by-step -step guide for the VLCD5 OSF installation, I invite you to look at my previous videos. There are two different branches from the Mbrusa user, one for the stock VLCD5 display and one for the 860C one, each one with different procedures to follow. The two procedures have similarities, like the use of the adapter ST-Link V2 STM8 that you can either buy or make yourself. There's also the same software to use on your Windows machine, the ST Visual Development. It's important to back up and restore the original TSDZ2 firmware, and, in case of the 860C display, that same software is used to flash our custom firmware. If you decide instead to keep the original display, you have to use some extra software that runs on Java, which means you also have to install the runtime environment. This is because while the 860C have all its custom settings ready to be changed on the display itself, 
The VLCD5 version of the USF needs you to preset your variables in the parameter configurator. Also, if you need to change some value, you have to rebuild and reflash the firmware again. This is yet another advantage of the 860C display over the original one, the freedom to change your settings on the go whenever you need it. Not only that, by the way, let's say you follow all the necessary steps to install the USF for your 860C display. I'll quickly recap them for you, but I suggest you to follow the previous video for a more detailed explanation. You have your ST Link adapter ready, so you go and install the ST Visual Development. First thing to do after that, before even thinking to get the custom firmware, is to take note of your odometer value. Now it's time to connect your e-bike to the PC and back up the three partitions of your TSDZ2 controller. Once you've saved the three backup files in a very safe place, you can download the latest release from the right Mbrusa repo. What you need is the file with the .hex extension. You can then flash that file on the right partition and voila, your brand new display is ready to be connected. Once you turn it on, long press minus plus and power at the same time and have a tour of all the settings to check if it's all good for your configuration. Specifically, you want to set this reset value to no. And if you need to use the throttle, you need to set it unconditional, motor temperature feature set to throttle, and disable street mode. We'll be back on the throttle in a bit, but for now let's see another advantage about having the 860C over the VLCD5 display. If you followed my experience with the VLCD5, you'll remember that I needed to change the assist values in order to have a driving experience closer to that of the Bafang BBS-02B. Some of you guys also warned me about the possible risky configurations that may overheat the TSDZ2 motor. Well, that's actually not necessarily the case for the 36 volt TSDZ2 variant. I can say it for sure for the 48 volt one, you have to check this on your own, but another argument in favor of my chosen settings is that on the 860C modified display, at the IS assistance level, there are similar values, very high by default. As you can see, the range is between 1 and 254, and at level 9 we have 250 for power assist and 250 for torque assist. Not that different from my settings on the VLCD5. My suggestion is not to change the assist values on the 860C display, cause they're already said to be the right choice for your OSF. As I said at the beginning, this display allows us to get a lot of information. There are four quadrants for displaying numerical values, and a large quadrant at the bottom for displaying a graph. It is up to us to choose the value that interests us the most. And about the driving experience, I don't have to convince you more than I already did in the previous videos. Let me just say that on the hybrid mode, I had an incredible torque assistance and at the same time, the same speed I had on the Bafang when pedaling regularly, meaning with regularly, not cost pedaling. It's all I ever wanted from my TSDZ2. The only regret I still have on the TSDZ2, both with the stock firmware and any OSF, is the behavior of the throttle. When you use it, it's not even sufficient to maintain the speed that you got using your legs. I tried both the stock throttle coming from the TSDZ2 and also using a Bafang one. In both cases, as you can see, the same result showed up. In a range between 1 to 255, the maximum value is something around 126. I still can't find any option to properly calibrate the throttle. So if any of you out there finds out how, please let me know in the comment section down here. That said, which one is better? Which option is the best for you? I can say that the 860C is definitely a nice to have. It gives you more control and the freedom to change any value without having to reflash the motor. By the way, on the performance side, you're not missing out on anything if you decide to keep your stock display. You can also do what I did, which is flashing the OSF on its VLCD5 variant so you can evaluate it and see if it's any good for you. Then, if you decide to upgrade, you can buy the A60C Advanced Display in a second moment from Cyclo.fr, restore the stock firmware on the TSDZ2 
and then flash the custom OSF with its .hex file to enjoy your new display. If you're planning to buy a brand new Tungsten kit, you can also decide to buy the complete kit already modified for you. All links in the description below. But what do you think guys? What are you driving? Which display option do you prefer? Feel free to share your experiences down here in the comment section. If you like this content, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future videos, and if you think these videos are doing something meaningful, consider donating using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.